So I've talked about Wrestle Kingdom 12 by New Japan Pro Wrestling, or at least the top matches in my opinion. I've talked about WWE millions of times by now. Well, let's get to one of the other bigger match, bigger promotions that is currently with rival TNA and trying to be the number two or Global Wrestling or whatever it's called every single week. Ring of Honor. Yep, for the first time since Adam Cole's turn to the dark side or Bullet Club, uh, where I talk about Jay Lethal versus Cole Cabana. Now I'm now talking about. A full-length pay-per-view match, a full-length pay-per-view show that was surprisingly aired for free. Ring of Honor, Honor before Honor reigns supreme. Now people were wondering, why is wait this is wait this is free? Why is it free? Well, a lot of people were looking into it um, when Ring of Honor announced that it was going to be for free and was going to air on Facebook Live on their main site. And on Fight TV, um, it got revealed that this is more like a test drive for them to try out their inevitable live stream streaming platform called Honor Club, which is scheduled to launch very soon, as they keep saying it's imminent. So, they clearly just wanted to trust out how this will work in the new environment they're going to do. And I'm kind of excited for it. I might get it. I haven't got a New Japan World, so I'm probably going to wait for that, though this might be a little bit, but I do plan to see this stuff eventually, and I want to expand my wrestling catalog more because I've all I've talked about is WWE, WCW, but um, I've never talked about the outside companies, the other promotions. I've been debating about whether how I would discuss ECW shows, and I mean the actual ECW shows, not whatever the hell we got in WWE world. So, let's get right into it. We start off the show uh, with the new Ring of Honor enforcer, Bully Ray, Bubba Ray Dudley as he's more popularly known as, um, welcomes everybody to the show and saying tonight is all about Ring of Honor and Ring of Honor getting more exposure. And the audience are chanting, Hall of Fame! Hall of Fame! Because Bubba Ray, as... The Dudley Boys are going to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame this year for WrestleMania. He goes ahead, puts the show on tonight, and he doesn't really do that much in terms of authoritarian power, surprisingly. And most likely because he's retired because of Sir because he announced his retirement back in December, so we'll never see Bully Rain WWE, which was at one point a planned idea, but now that's never going to happen. So, well, looks like we'll always have TNA, at least until they go bankrupt, probably. So the first match of the night was a re were these two wrestlers. Now, before I get right into the matches, I do not know any of the storylines except for the Bully Club. I do not know any of these people, so sorry if I get anything wrong about this only for what I've been told on the show. So we get Punishment Martinez versus Flip Gordon and okay that was a pretty surprisingly good opening matchup. There were some flips, kicks, um, Punishment Martinez looked really good. Um, Flip Gordon, yeah he was kind of fun. Um, so Here's the thing. I was surprised to see that Martinez goes ahead and uses um, uses the curb stomp. Yeah, he uses the curb stomp. Probably because every time... I I'm surprised... And they call it the curb stomp, so... Yeah, that is it's what his real move is called. Not blackout or whatever that he calls it nowadays. But, um... Yeah, uh, Punishment Martinez and Flip Gordon. It was a solid opening matchup. Great way to get everything energized. It was action packed. Uh, it was compressed until like what nine minutes and thirty five seconds, I believe, um, through the live coverage reports. Um, this was a pretty awesome matchup. Apparently, this is to prepare him for a big push or something. I think he's competing for a title soon at a live event show. Um, but yeah. 
Already now, I was starting to notice major differences with the presentation of Ring of Honor next to Japan, next to WWE. WWE was more high-tech and more powerful. Japan was more expansive arenas and more audience, more like uh, huge presentations and whatnot. Ring of Honor style is a little bit different. It's more smaller. It's not as expansive like WWE or Japan. Or New Japan Pro Wrestling, and they actually encouraged the fans to throw the confetti into the ring, which was a great tradition. And Vince got triggered by that when it happened in their Beast in the East special between Kevin Owens and Finn Balor. Because fuck the fans, right? So yeah. Um, so yeah. This is presentation was something different for me. So. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to get used to it, since I know the independent scenes and Jap New Japan Pro Wrestling don't have the same high tech quality, high tech quality stuff that we get from WWE because they have a bigger budget. But they're always saying this: they're more focusing on the wrestling, not 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 everything around it. Do not pay attention to the fireworks, to pyros, to fancy explosions. No, we're going for pure wrestling. We'll occasionally use weapons, but we are mostly focusing on pure wrestling. That's like the reverse style of ECW. Like, yeah, they had pure wrestling from time to time, but they're more focused on the hardcore style. Ring of Honor operates more in the pure wrestling style. So, Punishment Martinez defeats Cliff Gordon. It was, like I said, pretty solid opening matchup. Kind of okay for me. Um, and... I was in store for something. I, I would see later, but, um, yeah. Then we get this commentary guy named Capri Caprice Coleman. I don't know who he is. All I know is that Cole Cabana was on commentary, and I thought he was a little bit hilarious. But, uh, that's beside the point. Um, we also get, we also, um, <clears throat> get a match between Kenny King who I do remember from TNA as part of that group with MVP and Bobby Lashley as part of the, quote, beatdown clan. And that was only for a couple of weeks, and then it just fell apart. Uh, versus Shane Taylor. When I saw him, I was like, okay, so it seems like this big, bound, muscle beast of a man. And then I saw him, I was like, Okay, I know he can physically kill me if I dare criticize him. If he de if he if he wants to act like that, but yeah, um, it's not even the distinct distinct kind of style where he looks like where he can be unique. It's just, uh, but yeah, but I was mostly trying to see how would he do against Kenny King and. Yeah, this was an okay matchup for me as well. It went a little bit longer than the opening matchup, but it was alright. I actually thought Kenny King was going to lose at some point. So, yeah. And also, I did love the one thing commentary made about this matchup. is that Kenny King and, Ta and Shane Taylor are actually pretty similar in terms of what they want to do with their life in this thing. Like... They keep mentioning how they were in bad places once upon a time, and then they went to the job they always wanted to be in and got the money to have to provide for their family and not and try to escape that demented world they used to live in. I was like, wait, wait, wait. Two people who are very similar character backgrounds? Huh, when was the last time I heard something like that? Uh, I think it was Chris Jericho and Shawn Michaels when... I think Jerry Lawler said this at WrestleMania 19, where he said it almost felt like they were fighting. They were fighting the same person, like it was a mirror reflection, which I bet Chris Jericho loved because he was working with Shawn Michaels as idol. But um, yeah, Kenny King um, got uh, Shane Taylor did did pretty good for what I saw. Like, I thought, like, I never saw, I, like I said, I never watched Ring of Honor that much. Like, I've only watched a select few matches. And at best, my most recollection one was, um, you know, uh, uh, Adam Cole's uh, joining of the Bullet Club moment, which was freaking awesome and over-the-top hilarious. 
I was hoping to find a more up-to-date quality matchup with Kevin Steen and Sami Zayn versus the Briscoe brothers. Where, you know, the Age of Fall debut, because I because I seen that angle, but I wanted to see the match, and then see the angle, and I can talk about that as well. Yeah. So I'm hoping that's in the Honor Club uh, streaming service. So, Kane gets the victory after, attempt, after tw- two times attempting to try and lift Shane Taylor up, but using his weight to basically collapse him. And ultimately, King does get him into a, does follow through with his plan and lands a kick and royal kick and royal flush for the win. And even though at the beginning of the match it looked like he was the heel and Kenny King was the heel in the face, I think uh, ultimately they just showed that yeah they respected each other. They were actually part of the similar faction in in Ring of Honor. I don't remember what it was called. I do remember they mentioned that they were both part of a group. So. Yeah, that, that was pretty awesome. And I was honestly suspecting, like, the way the camera was handling everything, I thought, like, oh, oh is Shane Taylor going to sneak attack Kenny King out of pure frustration because they did mention how he has had a string of losses and how he might not, how his stock in, in the company might be lowering. I thought, oh, is he going to turn, like, go attack Kenny King after the match? Nope, that never happens, which honestly surprised me. So, then we get an intermission in the show. Not that big, huge break time that, like, what, lasted, like, 30 minutes, even though they said it was going to be 15. Um, we instead get an angle where we see a, the 16th competitor for the Woman of Honor tournament to compete for the Woman of Honor championship, which is a tournament for the women to ultimately become Woman of Honor champion. Now, a lot of people were wondering who's, like, they already have a bunch of other, these 15 other women selected, but I was curious, huh, they're building this up, maybe who is this? And it's Tanel Dashwood. Now, you might, now, to those who don't probably know, Tanel Dashwood is a very exceptional competitor. She's from Australia, and her last match, uh, was with Asuka. Yep, it's Emma. It's Emma, everybody! Emma's in Ring of Honor now! Now I kind of want her to win the Women of Honor Championship. And nothing more than because I felt like she needs to get something to justify her career after the screw job that they performed. So, yeah. And she can't call herself Emma because, you know gimmick rights or, or some bullshit like that that still confuses me and I really question that philosophy of oh well we own the name and the characters so um we get to keep them even though we have virtually nobody who could replace it so instead Emma is going instead by Tenille Dashwood which is her real name and she's here to win the title Bully Ray comes out and t- basically says the fans want to see her wrestle tonight and they make the announcement that it will be Tanel Dashwood and Mandy Leon versus Kelly Klein and Stacy Shadows. And I was like, wait, did they actually do an angle that actually sounds interesting and book a match in the middle of a pay-per-view that actually makes sense since it relates to the biggest storyline of the great tournament that's going to happen? So... After that, we'll get to back to that later. Um, then, apparently, the aggressor named Cheeseburger. I will never get used to that name. I, I can't imagine anyone saying, I'm Cheeseburger. And not laugh a bit. Probably because I'm not the indie, I'm not the indie type fan. I was I never watched the indies. I never watched Cheeseburger. But just hearing the fact there's a wrestler named Cheeseburger... It just confuses me. So, it's good. So instead, apparently, he couldn't come in due to a family thing, or he was sick. So we get Josh Woods replacing him to face TV champion in a non the in a non title matchup with the TV champion Celias Young. And holy crap, I really like this guy. Yeah, 
I've never watched him before, and I was like, well, I already like him. Like, his character gimmick actually sounds pretty freaking intriguing. Like, I looked up who Celeste Young is. Um, yeah, it reminds me a little bit of NXT's Bull Dempsey. Y you know, that guy who's no longer in WWE. They released him, like, a couple of years back. But remember how he was called the last of a dying breed? Which actually sounded like a freaking uh, awesome thing. But they never really went anywhere with that kind of gimmick and storyline. No. Instead, Celeste Young calls himself the last real man in professional wrestling. And, um... Then I looked up where, where he got this gimmick thing is. Um... Here's what I found out. He, it was said in a 2017 interview with SoloWrestling.com, uh, Celeste Young, also known as Caleb DeWall, uh, said this, said that, um... That he developed the last real man gimmick after being inspired by his dad, including his work ethic right down to his appearance, with slicked back black hair and a thick mustache. And yeah. I was like Okay, um Yeah, so every time I saw this guy wrestle not only was he doing some occasional looking like he's going to do a high-flying maneuver, which would have been freaking awesome because he's 38 years old. Yeah. And yeah, he was doing a pretty freaking awesome match with this guy. that, And I was like, okay, I, I, I want to see this guy more. I, I want to see this guy more. And I was also then realizing, um, yeah, I, now I was thinking like, who wants to walk with Elias versus Celeste Young? Like, that that would sound like a freaking awesome match just from the name alone. Walk with Elias or walk with Celeste? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But every time I saw him wrestle and the way he looked, I felt like, wait... Is this a wrestling promotion from the... Is this a wrestler from the 80s era? Because the way he looks, the way he talks, the way he dresses even a little bit, he looks like he's a, he'd be a wrestler from the 80s. Yeah, like, he managed to get all these stakes right. Like, um, if I was to guess, I would say he would be like, um... Okay, who was that guy that, um... I'm, I'm trying to remember. Uh, he was AWA champion, and... Um, let's see, I'm, I'm trying to really freaking remember who that was. Um, he, I think he was called the Lariat. Uh, that was his nickname. And he did something with the AWA championship. Um, Uh, let's see. Um, I'm trying to get this right. Like, so. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah. He reminds me of Stan the Lariat Hansen, the way he looks. In fact, I had looked it up, and he and DeWell said that he claimed to be the nephew of Stan Hansen. However, Hansen revealed in, in his interview with Jim Ross that they are not related. Which, I was like, okay, considering that I was thinking of him, and I didn't know a thing about Celias Young, I was like, okay, that is the most freaking awesome coincidence I've ever heard. And if they were related, I honestly would say, yeah, I'm not actually kind of surprised. They actually look similar. So, yeah, Celeus Young uh, actually did a pretty good match. It was 10 minutes and 50 seconds, yeah, I felt like it was 20 minutes. And he has this enforcer guy with him. Um, the uh, uh, I'm trying to, I don't know who this guy is. I, I'm using Wikipedia and occasional other sites while I'm recording to guy and memorize who these people are. Oh, a uh, Beer City Bruiser, who's constantly drinking as part of his gimmick. Yeah, there was an awesome moment where he just smashes the head over jo over Joss Woods with the beer bottle with glass breaking out. But, um, 
Yeah, then they did something that was kind of a little deflating of this match. He no-sold it. Like, he's instantly with a burst of energy, and all I'm wondering is, what? Like, that was the one major F-up I thought. But, yeah. Um, Woods looks like he was getting huge momentum, and then, nope, he doesn't. And... He was so close, and this was an untile match, but then Celeste Young would hit Misery for the win. And it was revealed that it was said that it was going to be Celeste Young for the TV Championship, defending it against Kenny King, and... Okay. But, uh... I, I wanted to know, did Celeste Young ever... Was he ever a world champion in Ring of Honor? No... He was just television. He's just been television champion, and also he won the tag team tag wars tournament and the honor rumble and feud of the year with Jay Lethal in 2017. So, yeah, I should check those matches out with uh, Jay Lethal if I can find them. Hopefully, the the uh, the Ring of Honor Honor Club Network will be able to provide for me if I actually do get it. But. Yeah, it, it was, um, oh man, like, just seeing Salai like, I thought, like, yeah, he, he's pretty much that stiff wrestler from the 80s or, like, the early 90s when the whole gimmick of of the stiff wrestling style that wasn't built with the theatrics and crazy over-the-top wrestling style or what people would call the Young Bucks style nowadays, considering how the Young Bucks apparently like to act in terms of the ring. I'll get to them when, since they're the main event. But I did enjoy that. I do enjoy that, but I do like the, I did like the classic style he was doing. So, yeah. Honestly, that was a pretty awesome match. For me, at least. Then we get to... A match that almost did kind of steal the show and even confuse me at times, but ultimately could not succumb to the power of the Young Bucks. Downton Castle and the Boys versus SoCal Uncensored, also known as Christopher Daniels, Carzalan, and Sky. And here's the thing. Dallin Castle is the Ring of Honor champion, the world champion of Ring of Honor. He's only in the middle of the show. I would think that you would ha that since this show is since this promotion is based on more traditional style wrestling, and it's a pure wrestling promotion, they would go with pure rules, as in they would have the champion be the main event. Yeah. And yeah, like. Down Castle, Castle and the Boys, as they're called, the tag team. I was like, okay, um, are they trying to be cartoonish people like the Young Bucks, but at the same time trying to be a little bit serious? Yeah, I <laughs> like it was w crazy how everything was going with those three. And they're apparently very popular. This was my first... Like, I only mentioned him once, and I was referencing how Cody Rhodes lost the title to him. But I've never really seen him perform before, so this was my first. And I was like, okay, I can't tell if this is awesome or confusing. And... Yeah... The boys, they kind of remind me of what the Usos used to be when they were in the stale stage of their career with the Usos, Usos, and that traditional style they would usually used to do. Um, that was the vibe I kept getting, except add in the new date, add in the new dates over eccentric personality, and you kind of got the boys. Um, so. Yeah, it was hilarious kind of matchup. And surprisingly, uh, there was moments in the match where Kevin Dassel just kept throwing all the boy, the two boys all around the ring against the uh, SoCal Uncensored. You know, that name that Samoa Joe calls himself SoCal, or at least puts into his labels and logos. Yeah. But the most surprising thing that happened was they didn't win the match. Yeah. 
SoCal and Censored won the match, which surprised me. I thought that that they would let the world champion win, but no, instead, SoCal actually wins. And and then I was like, okay, that was actually, that was kind of awesome. And then they attack, um, SoCal and Censored attacks Down Castle and the boys, but he's able to repel their attacks, Down Castle is, and they manage to escape, but even though, and here's the thing that confused me. How does Down Castle win the war? The commentator said that. I was like, um, aren't they supposed to have a future match, I think, with Christopher Daniels? I kept hearing that, I think. Or am I thinking of somebody else? But, yeah, isn't Christopher Daniels and Down Castle supposed to do a match together eventually? How did they win the war? They just lost the battle, but they rebound and regrouped, and the war's still going on, I think. I don't know. So, like I said, pretty awesome six-man tag team match. It would ultimately fall to the later six-man tag team match, but, like I said, um, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny. Yeah, so, then after this huge long intermission break happened and I was doing nothing for the, le for the next 15 to 20 minutes, uh, did a couple of things around the house, uh, we come back and we see the Briscoe brothers arrive and they cut a huge promo saying the fans fail to realize that there is about to be bloodshed and it will be on their hands. They will destroy their heroes and Mark of the Briscoes tells all of them to shut up and they want their tag titles back. And then they go into this whole feud with Chris Saban and no Alex Shelley is here tonight and they demand he walk out and hand over the titles. Yeah, all throughout this promo and eventual beatdown they did on Alex Shelley, even though he tried his damnedest to fight off, fight them off, I was like, are are they trying to be like the Usos? Like, I don't know who came up with the gimmick first, but yeah, I was like, are are they trying to mimic the Usos a little bit? I could be wrong on that because I don't know if they have if they were always like this. I have heard the Briscoes. And especially Kevin Steen for and Elgar, uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce his, his uh, other part of the name of Sami Zayn versus the Briscoe brothers. But yeah, I just kept thinking, are are they trying to mimic the Usos? Because now I kind of want to see these two teams go at it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, the Briscoes beat down Alex Shelley, and the tag titles are basically not under their control officially. And they also start beating the shit out of basically everybody's secu security, and kind of a couple of referees. Yeah. So, the Jay Briscoe says that this is their house, and they, they built this place, which could be made as legitimately, yeah, they did. So then we get to Stacy Shadows versus Kelly Klein and Kelly Klein versus Tanel Dashwood, aka Emma, versus and Mandy Leon, and yeah, they were trying to they were building up Tanel Dashwood. In fact, here's the thing: I was honestly thinking like, wait, isn't she under no c compete clause? She can't go wrestle on live television. On live television, though, I think because this was an internet show, this doesn't count. I think. Um, is that it? That was the vibe I kept thinking, but, um, okay. She managed to get a couple of good strikes in. Uh, Stacy Shadows was this, was like, reminding me a little bit of Nia Jax. And Kelly Klein, I kept hearing, was apparently have never been pinned or submitted before, for like, what, I think they mentioned 2015, which I thought maybe I don't think I heard that right. But, yeah, um, well, they did mention that she has this unstoppable momentum or something like that, but, yeah. Uh, Stacey Shouts and Kelly Klein have issues since, you know, this whole Women of Honor tournament's happening. Tanel Dashwood and Mandy Leon were working together as best they could, and this match was relatively short for, for the most part. Um, 
it was mostly just to showcase Emma, and we also got Cody Rhodes' right Brandy Rhodes to show up and do commentary mocking Kelly Klein. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure in that match it's not going to go well in her favor. If that is indeed one of the few rounds in the tournament, if she gets that to that point. But moving on, uh, Emma beats um, Stacey Shouse and pins her. And they and she and uh, Mandy Leon go to the back. Meanwhile, Kelly Cl- Klein is pissed off and just walks out. While Stacy Shadows is just a down for the count. So this was uh, Emma's first debut in Ring of Honor for uh, in the post WWE era for her. So, like I said, please let her. Win the title. I, I want her to win the title. <laughs> if nothing else, then just to just get satisfaction out of it. Like to tell, like basically, like Ring of Honor is telling Vince, "Hey Vince, this is what you screwed up on. You could have got, you could have had this. You could have had this, but you chose ignorance, or arrogance, or done whispering to your ear while screwing over all, all these people's wallets." So. Now we get to a match that honestly stole the show for a lot of people, but I think the last match is what, what was my personal favorite. I'll get to I'll explain that later. Uh, Jay Lethal versus Jonathan Grisman. Uh, they do a classic chain wrestling style maneuver, um, and yeah, <laughs> this was kind of. I was actually thinking, like, is Jay Lethal going to lose? Is Jay Lethal really going to lose this match? Like, I've seen him a couple of times in wrestling on on the internet. But, um, yeah, they also mentioned, like, I get why they were saying, like, trying to tell people that this is what Ring of Honor is. Because, less, because they're more like a niche market, so to speak, I think. And, like, I've never watched it. I've heard of it, but I never watched it, so I didn't know what's what. All I noticed is that wrestlers like CM Punk were from there. Basically got their big break there. Uh, Cole Cabana got his big break there. Jay Lethal, Austin Aries, uh, Ali Cesaro was in there. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens. Yeah, like a lot of these guys were either in Ring of Honor and got their big break when they got called, when they got the call from WWE, or when... They managed to make a name for themselves before going to WWE and could still make a name for themselves without going to WWE. So, yeah, Jay Lethal and John Grant Grisman, it was a freaking awesome match. Really freaking awesome. Lasting nearly 18 minutes, actually. At, at the end of the match... Um, I, uh, I thought John actually won the match. Like, Jay, but it turns out I found out that Jay locks in, locked in the figure four leg lock. And I was like, wait, I thought, man, I was so confused for a moment. Like, wait, did John win or did Jay Lethal win? But no, it turns out it was Jay. And I did like how John was basically going in the never see die mode. Which was freaking awesome, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah." Like he doesn't care if his finger's been horribly damaged at this point. He's taking off the protective, what little protection he had for himself on his arms, and basically, uh, and you could hear a lot of the wrestlers speak trash talk, like classic heel stuff. So, yeah, and. It was really fun. It was a really fun match. Like, there were a couple of big moments I thought Jonathan was going to win. Or there were a couple of moments I thought the franchise player Jay Lethal was going to win. Who, I must stress, was a heel once upon a time. And occasionally would turn heel occasion- at some point. So, yeah, apparently he could do that. But, uh, yeah, Vince can't turn Cena heel. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, pretty awesome match. Um, Jay Lethal is really talented, and Jonathan was really good in this match. Um, I see, like, 
I don't know how far in their careers. I know Jay Lethal's been around for a while. That's I do know, but I don't know how long Jonathan's been in this in this business. But um, yeah, it was a pretty awesome match, and yeah, I love the how the submission transitions kept going. Like we got the cross phase, uh, how it was almost close calls at, at times. <laughs> yeah, so. I wouldn't change a thing about this match. Like, maybe you can say if you wanted this guy to win or Jay Lethal to win. But really, I didn't care. Like, it's fun. So, yeah, now we get to this big match that I thought was going to be the main event, but it's not. Cody Rhodes, Adam Page, and Marty Scroll of the Bullet Club versus Taven Orion and Vinny of the Kingdom. Now, this is the one storyline I somewhat had focused on, mostly because it's Bullet Club. Except for the Kingdom, we had all this dissension brewing with the Bullet Club, specifically with Cody and Kenny Omega. Marty Scroll caught in the middle, Hangman Page trying to do things under Cody's leadership. And. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Kingdom, that was an, that's a pretty freaking awesome group, just seeing how they look and dress and have an axe. Yeah. And I did love how Bullet Club, all, the three members of Bullet Club, all came out with separate entrances instead of just coming out together. Either they were, either, I don't really know if that was because they do it all the time or it's because of the dissension issues. They did mention that it could be because of the dissension, which would be understandable with everything that's happened the past week or so. But uh, now we get, I like, okay, the referees were freaking awesome in throughout this entire show. Like, they actually physically get involved when absolutely needed. In fact,. I do love this moment where Vinny holds the axe and Marty gets the umbrella and it looks like you could get the duel between umbrella versus um versus the axe. And sure enough, Brandy uh Cody's wife goes ahead and orders the ref to get rid of the axe and actually treats it like it's a person for a moment. Like I was like, uh oh, oh yeah, that's kind of hilarious. And I was like also, who proved a fucking axe in the ring? So, yeah. Um, this was... Holy crap, this was an awesome match. Like, I don't know the build-up, so to speak, on this. All I know is the Bullet Club storyline. In fact, I was honestly suspecting, like, maybe Kenny Omega might show up since there is going to be a match between him and Cody Rhodes at the later pay-per-view back in April from now before WrestleMania. So I was like, is this going to happen? And also, uh, Cody does tributes to his brother Goldust, and, he, and they kept mentioning a little bit of Dusty Rhodes doing he was doing and there were moments and there was another hilarious moment where um i'm trying to remember who uh oh uh taven uh who cody's been feuding with has put put puts on his shirt and then demands cody to kiss the ring of honor which was the ring that cody made for himself it's part of an egotistical maneuver however now it's come back to bite him and then Cody just says, fuck that, and hits the disaster kick. And I was like, oh, wow. And, yeah, and, and right now I'm just going to say, um, I know I don't do, vi like, video showings of myself, but if you wanted to know how I'm wearing the Hangman Page shirt, shirt, so, yeah, Adam Hangman Page. So... Yeah, that was kind of awesome. Uh, Adam was actually pretty freaking awesome as well. Marty Scroll always awesome with his finger-breaking maneuver style. Uh, Cody, because I'm pretty sure he's going crazy. And here's the most shocking thing I got. The Kingdom won. I thought Bullet Club was, was in a shoot for this, but no, they, they lose. 
Damon hits Cody with, um, punches Cody in, in the head with the ring and steals the win. And I was like, wow. Uh, wow. Bullet Club lost? And then they tried to make, and then after they had left, after the kingdom left, savoring in their victory, and it's a big deal. Um, Cody, Marty Scroll, and Hangman Page go ahead and try to show that they're still united, even though it's clearly obvious they aren't. Um, I'm like, Marty Scroll is at least divided. He doesn't know where he's going to go. In fact, they keep referencing being the elite, like, a lot. And I was like, wait, so the show that everyone assumed was just going to be for comedy is actually being used for storyline purposes? Holy crap, this is freaking genius. Well, actually, I think they've done this for years now, but I, for the entire duration of the show when things got really popular for them. But still, it was pretty freaking awesome to learn that, that, was, that they used that for an actual storyline. So, yeah. I wonder if they're aware of what the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and Kota Yushi are planning. All I know is that Marty Skrull is still in his conflict state because he's all he's because he kept wearing uh, the Kenny Omega shirt and then the and then the American Nightmare shirt, which I also have. It's currently hanging up. So, yeah. <laughs> Freaking awesome match, but it's the main event in my opinion that stole the show. Uh, the Young Bucks versus the Best Friends. Yeah, that, that's the actual name of the opposing team. Yeah, I was a little surprised that it was called that. Uh, and okay, normally when you see a Young Buck match, people would say, "Oh, so is this gonna be the over the top style wrestling?" And you're gonna expect super kick galore and go crazy with it. In fact, I'm still waiting for that dream moment where four wrestlers who do the super kick a lot ultimately do a super kick to each other, except all the all of them hit each other in the head and just collapse in the middle of the ring. That that would actually be pretty freaking awesome, and I could actually imagine the Young Bucks being two of the guys to do it. Um. Yeah, and you would expect maybe the maybe they'll do this whole um, crazy over the top maneuvers they like to do. No, they they don't. They're actually tamed about it. Instead, they're putting in in ring psychology. They're establishing the continuity. They're keeping continuity with New Japan Pro Wrestling and Ring of Honor because they've always had a business friendship. Uh, where they keep talking about how Matt was injured, so to speak, in New Japan Pro Wrestling at um, Nai Sapuro, Sapuro, which I was like, oh, oh, cr oh, God. Oh, God, the interconnected storylines. Oh! Okay, imagine I'm Rusev right now when he tried to get that pinfall over John Cena at WrestleMania and he just did this over the top cartoony. <laughs> And then just falls to the ground. That's the best way to describe what I was thinking. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And Trent and Chucky e. T. As the tag team. As the team. As the teammates are called. Uh, yeah. They were. They were really kind of. Playing the jerk role. And. They put on glasses. They. They. Just lit a cigarette up in the arena. I never thought that was banned because ECW's no longer around as far as I know. Um, and Matt and Nick, um, they were doing the Never Say Die gimmick of the match. And, yeah. I was surprised that this was more of an entering psychology storytelling based match instead of the usual Young Bucks style match. They were actually selling... A problem in the story, a uh, continuity stuff in the storyline, and yeah, they, you really did think. And I'm pretty sure there were moments everyone thought the best friends was gonna win and the Young Bucks would actually lose. And everyone was like, the commentators were saying like they'd never seen the Young Bucks in Ring of Honor at least get be put in such a desperate situation. Yeah, like like they never seen the Young Bucks getting tortured like this. And I was like, okay, that's actually true. That's pretty freaking awesome. 
And sure enough, we do get a bunch of several super kick match moments. And then Matt just suddenly uses the power of the of believing in oneself and ultimately gets the hopeful win for the team and gets and sets up the Meltzer driver, which is named after Dave Meltzer because five star wrestling stuff. Um not not the show that everyone hated, apparently that I kept hearing. I didn't watch it. But yeah, the Young Bucks defeat the best friends at 25 minutes and 5 seconds and that was a f- <laughs> I'm gonna say a fucking awesome match because like you would think the Young Bucks the Young Bucks would go crazy and go all out with this go balls to the wall on uh, on the stunts they like to do no instead they opted to do more in-ring psychology continuity and storytelling with this, it sell the injured angle that that uh, Matt was going through with his back, and yet they managed to get a good twenty five minute match. It was kind of it was really awesome, and that's why I kept thinking like this is the match that stole the show. That's my honest opinion. Like yeah, Jay Lethal and Jonathan could probably make the argument they stole the show, but that's just this is my opinion. And. The show ends after that. I was expecting, like, maybe Cody, Hangman Page, and Marty Scroll would come out, and Cody's, like, trying to know, where does your allegiance lie? I know you met Kenny and Cody Ibushi. Where do your allegiance lie? Are you with us? Are you with them? I was honestly expect- expecting that because, since, you know, they're going to have a match in April between Cody and Kenny Omega. Clearly, something has to give on that. I think they're going to wait it out for a little bit longer, but yeah, for now, uh, we'll see how that goes. But <laughs> yeah, and and I loved how the fans were still chanting even though it was banned by WWE because Vince is a complete asshole at times, um, where everyone was chanting, too sweet, woo woo, too sweet, woo woo, too sweet, woo woo, too sweet, woo woo. Like, they combined uh, the villain song of Marty Scroll to with the Two Street Chants because it's just awesome. So, yeah. Honor Reigns Supreme, Ring of Honor pay per view. That was, a, that was pretty awesome for me. Um, yeah. I don't know how many people watched it, but this was their way of testing out the uh, upcoming Honor Club streaming service. I say they pretty, did a pretty good job. I think they were trying to get some things to work out, uh, but ultimately, I do think they're gonna. I think they do have something going here. Um, yeah, but I bet Vince is a little bit mad because they they keep sending out surveys WWE about would you like to see Ring of Honor on the WWE Network as part of a tier price like all these uh, independent promotions. Well, with Ring of Honor now establishing their own network, I don't think that's gonna be the case now. So, we'll have to see. So, Honor reigns supreme. Freaking awesome. A lot of great ma- a lot of good matches. Most matches range from okay to freaking awesome. Not one ounce of filler for me, at, like, at all. Like, okay, maybe the Briscoe promo. That kind of felt, ultimately, doesn't really mean anything in, the, in terms of the show. I think in storyline for the following weeks, yeah... But yeah, in terms of the show, they could obviously I just left that on TV, put that on TV on Ring of Honor TV, and now on the pay per view or the free per view <laughs> that they called it that that I think Cole Cabana called it. So yeah, also the dog team were there and they were going crazy on commentary a little bit. So. Yeah, that was my thoughts on Ring of Honor's Honor Reign Supreme pay-per-view or free purview or I internet purview show. This was Neo Reality Entertainment. If you like, comment, subscribe, and donate. Stay tuned for more.